Good morning. Intel is a premier U.S. company that designs and builds semiconductor chips. Intel is also one of the primary beneficiaries of the subsidies that are being offered under the CHIPS Act. The CHIPS Act is a multi-billion dollar project that's intended to build a semiconductor manufacturing industry in the United States. Currently, most of the best semiconductor foundries are in Asia, in Taiwan, Korea, Japan, and in mainland China. It's in Asia where the fastest and most advanced chips can be made profitably. In the United States, everything just costs more, and the chip makers are only able to produce chips in the United States if they are promised big subsidies to do it. This is because the chips cost, on average, 50% more to make in the United States compared to Asia. So for every chip made in the U.S., it's already losing money. So the government needs to pay these companies to build them there. We see this playing out in Arizona, where Taiwan Semiconductor Corp, or TSMC, is tentatively moving ahead to build a couple of fabrication plants there after they were promised billions of dollars in subsidies. TSMC put out a press release to their investors that said that their discussions with the United States government are non-binding and that they probably still would not be building the most advanced chips in Arizona. Today's feature is about Intel. Here is the Wall Street Journal covering the story. Intel was given $8.5 billion directly from the federal government. The Biden administration also promised Intel up to $11 billion in below market loans for projects in a handful of states, Ohio, Arizona, New Mexico, Oregon. But it was Ohio, which is where most of the money will be spent. And Ohio is also giving Intel $2 billion in state subsidies. But Intel just announced that they are delaying their construction in Ohio and won't open now until 2027 or 2028. And this is the same as what TSMC said about their Arizona operations. They pushed back the opening dates of their foundries there too, saying also that the market conditions in the U.S. don't favor high-speed semiconductor manufacturing. American politicians on both sides insist that reshoring semiconductor manufacturing is a national security interest. And maybe they're right, hard to say, but let's just look at the economic story. Intel lost $7 billion making semiconductors in the U.S. last year. They lost five and five, so they lost $10 billion in the previous two years. TSMC and Samsung are some of the most profitable companies on earth. They're making faster chips than Intel does, but their costs are just lower. Everything costs less in Asia than in the US. And we have now the CEOs of two of the biggest semiconductor companies in the world, TSMC from Taiwan and Intel from the US, both saying that they cannot make semiconductors in the United States without huge government subsidies to do it. And what are some reasons for that? The first problem is engineers. Electrical engineers in the U.S. cost eight to ten times more than they do in Asia. Engineers in the United States are also at shortage. The unemployment rate for top engineers in the United States is basically zero. So if we're going to be hiring tens of thousands of engineers in the United States to reshore the semiconductor industry, it means we're taking those engineers from other industries and other fields like road building or aeronautics or clean energy or maritime. That will drive up costs in those industries now, which are also critical to the United States, goes without saying. We have shortages of engineers across our entire economy. Asia does not have a shortage of engineers. China alone graduates seven times more engineers than we do. And a lot of the engineers that we graduate from American universities are actually Chinese anyway, and they're heading back here. All of this is to say that even after these chip foundries invest billions and billions of dollars to build the plants, they will still have a persistent manpower problem, which is going to show up in the prices of the chips. 
if the chips cost a lot more to produce in the United States, then the American government needs to provide subsidies. They need to give companies lots of money to drop the price in the chips so they'll sell in the market. And maybe we're willing to do that. And maybe it's even a good thing. Let's suppose we provide subsidies for 10 years. What happens in year 11? Do we sign up for another decade of giving companies like TSMC billions of dollars a year to produce chips in the US when they are producing those same chips in Taiwan for a lot less money? We can read these analyses here and draw some conclusions. We do not have the surplus engineers now or in the future to build this new industry from scratch. Washington politicians have put a big pile of money on the table for anyone willing to make a multi-decade bet on our being able to build semiconductors profitably after that big pile of money is gone. And it's not a surprise that the companies saw the money, they got excited about how they might spend the money, they got their pictures taken with the president and the governors and senators and whatever. Then they started talking to their own engineers, to their own investors, to their customers. And they realized it's not nearly enough. Not now, not later, maybe not ever. These companies are the best in the world at making semiconductors, but they can't make money making semiconductors in the United States. And there isn't enough money in Washington to make them even want to try. Be good. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Everyone who hears these words of Jesus and acts on them is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and that house did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Thank you.